details because it's really not very pleasant. Um, but um, one of the things that I found out very early on in my first diagnosis anyway was that um, it's, all disease starts in the gut. Hippocrates stated it thousands of years yes. ago. It all, everything starts within the gut. So if you've got a compromised gut, which I now have, and I quite have quite a severely compromised gut, I have something called gut dysbiosis, which means the bacteria in my gut is completely out of whack. Um, the microbiome's not working properly. So at the moment, what I'm concentrating on is healing my gut, hence the organic food, the organic meat, the nutrient density of the meat, uh, taking probiotics, drinking things like kombucha and kefir. I actually make my own water kefir and have done for two or three years. Can't make kombucha, it just doesn't work. Um, so I'm trying to take heart care of my gut and to improve everything. Fermented foods. So I'm making sauerkraut yes. or I'm buying it. And they're so much make. better if you make yeah. them yourself. If, if there is, because the, the probiotics you get when you make it yourself from you go and buy your organic cabbage is very different to what you get in a, in a jar that you buy in a shop. It's or a tin. Or a tin. <laughs> yeah, don't buy the tin stuff because that's not. There's nothing in there's there. There's nothing in there whatsoever. Um, thankfully... And I, well, I, nothing healthy, sorry. Of course there's right. going to be yeah, sauerkraut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's becoming quite a business now. that People are becoming more aware of their gut health. And pe more and more people are talking about it. It's mainstream. Pete Evans, bless him, love him or hate him. He's vilified by goodness knows many how many people. But he's on the right track and he's getting it out there. And I yes. think actually the fact that he's being vilified is helping because people are taking notice because of that. And yeah. So I think it's backfiring on them. But that's my personal thing um Love so it's so yeah it's all about healing your gut start slowly just start in, introducing fermented foods one teaspoon at a time you don't do what my husband did and he had a whole pile of it and he was on the toilet for the rest of the day it had, <laughs> it had that much of an impact and that is how much it will impact you because yeah. your gut is going to go oh this is stuff i don't know anything yeah, about what the heck is what this what the heck is this yeah take it slowly um, I take supplements, I have work, I see Madonna who does a lot of work with me um, and it's, it's basically going back to just healing my gut. Um, what I'm doing and, and everything I do around me is supporting what I'm doing to heal my gut. So lifestyle? Lifestyle is a huge thing as well. I was very much a stress head and I'm still a stress head but it's under much better control. Um, you get stressed the first thing you get is a stomach ache. It goes to your gut and your rashes start flowing, everything else. And every time you raise your cortisol levels, your gut is impacted. So every time you get stressed, your gut goes, oh, I don't like this. And um, my son, as soon as his anxiety goes up, his gut is compromised. And it can do one or, it can do either the diarrhea or constipation. Yes, it, you I know, mean, so, go either way. Yeah. Um, or the bloating, burping, belching, wind, flatulence, you know. Well, the But yes, it, it starts in the gut. Yeah. So looking at your diet is the first thing that you can do. Go slowly, remove these pro-inflammatory foods, get rid of your gluten, but don't then change to all the gluten-free treats and stuff yes. like that because what you're then doing is loading your body with sugar. And sugar is a whole different thing. Yeah. I actually, uh, I, my taste buds have changed so much now that um, I don't actually put sweetener in anything anymore. Right. At all, whether it be maple syrup or even honey, there is no sweetener at all. Um, and I don't bake. I was a huge baker, so there's no baking that goes on in my house unless I'm feeling very generous and my <laughs> son's been really good and I'll bake him something. <laughs> um, but it's it's... It's baby steps. Yeah. Um, it really is. I thought changing my diet was going to be the be all and end all because, yeah. and the thing is, as well, um, I was hearing all these recovery stories that people changed their diet and within six months they were in remission for all their diseases and stuff like that. And I think it depends where they are, you know, where they are on, on the spectrum yeah, and where exactly. they are on the journey and I've how many had, things they're doing. This has been, yeah. this has been mulling away since 
my since I was six or seven when I started with asthma and eczema. Right. And those were the precursors, but we didn't know about it. Back now then. they're actually the opposite side of the immune system yep. to the autoimmune. So when we've got eczema <laughs> and asthma, that's the T helper two, two side that is excess of yes. once we once we tip into the autoimmunity. Yes. Which, of course, can include things like Hashimoto's yes. thyroiditis, yes. you know, so many things. But things like that in kids, that's a precursor for autoimmunity, yeah. so you need to get it under control. I mean, if you've got a, a kids, start them on fermented food, start yeah. them on liver. Um, when they're fussy, hide it. Yes. Get that nutrient density into them. Yeah. It's harder when you're older. Um, I've had 30 years, no, 40 years of this going through my body so I've got a lot of work to do yes and I know I'm here for the long run and I'm very happy with that I, I like yeah. my diet my kids even say wow we're eating great stuff I remember that then that was the biggest compliment of, of all was a couple of years ago we were sitting on the couch and my son turned to me and he said mum he said I'm glad you're sick and I kind of looked at him and went, no, 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 no. He said, no, I mean it in a good way because now we're eating such nice food. And because mm -hmm. I'm a cook, uh, my mum was a chef and I've always been in a kitchen. The kitchen is my happy place. Yeah. And so um, I spend three or four hours every day. And he keeps telling me I need to start catering and I need to start doing this and I need to start doing that because all I do is cook. But I'm in control. That's yes. the difference. I am in control of what is going into my body and what is going into my family. Because your body. system got so sensitive that you could tell the difference between... If I have a tomato, and I did this, and this is how I found out how bad my, tomato, my um, reaction to tomato is, I was making a, a bolognese sauce for the family, so it was full beef, it was nightshades, they had the lot. And I had some tomato on my finger, didn't think, wasn't thinking, licked it off, and my daughter went, Mum, spit. So I went, oh, what? She said spit, so I spat, thinking, well, what's she talking yeah. about? And my tongue and immediately started to tingle and to oh, swell. Oh, wow. So, so the start of anaphylaxis. Yes, so by eliminating that, um, and this is what the protocol's all about. You eliminate foods for a certain time period, and then you reintroduce them, seeing yeah. how your body reacts. Yes. If your body is happy with it, you bring them in. If it's not happy, you leave it out for a bit longer. Yes. Tomatoes, because I had such a reaction, tomatoes will never come back. Yeah. And because tomatoes are part of the nightshade group, it probably means any other nightshade, I'm yeah. going to have the same And it's not reaction. overnight these things happen. These <laughs> no. reactions take many months. They're yeah. sort of like three months you might yeah. need to be off, six months, 12 yes. months. Yes. You know, they're not yes. short things. <laughs> and you can bring things back in and your body might be able to tolerate them. But if you bring them back in and you're suddenly having eggs every day, that was the other thing, eggs came out. If you're suddenly having eggs every day, your body's going to say, well, no, don't want that. And okay. you'll, you'll have yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> and I do miss my eggs. Yeah. But I know I can have an egg yolk occasionally and I'm fine. But yes. one egg yolk occasionally, knowing it's come from pasture-raised, soy-free egg is fine. Because a lot of the times you will react to the soy. Right. Mm. I've so never soy, heard that with eggs. Soy is removed from the diet huh. as well. I'll have to uh, add that one into my muscle testing with eggs because yeah, I already do organic, free range, and, free yes. range and caged because eggs. Because a lot of people are actually reacting to the yeah. soy that's in the feed. Now we do need to wrap up. On Instagram, you have a fabulous page on Instagram, don't you? I do. This is funny. This is <laughs> okay. funny, Paul Jay. Okay, when I first changed my diet and I was explaining to people what I was doing and how I was doing it and why I was doing it and I was explaining what what foods I'd removed instead of focusing on what foods I could have everyone kept saying well what can you eat what can you eat and so someone had suggested to me going on to Instagram and Instagram I was using as a tool to gauge what I was eating so it was it was keeping um, me keeping in, you on track keeping me on track yes and so I became Amanda underscore what can you eat. <laughs> and so just about every day I post a meal of something that I, I've prepared or if I've been to the markets yeah. or a lifestyle. There is, I'm there mainly... You're supporting the whole <clears throat> autoimmune protocol paleo people out there. So if anyone's interested, that's where I am. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. That's been My amazing pleasure. this morning. Very interesting. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much for coming along, Amanda. Cool. All right, now, uh, New Leaf. Now, it's Edith Street, Wynnum. Edith, yes, yes. And also the phone number because uh, th there's been so much content in yeah. this morning that a lot of people might like to uh, review Absolutely. a couple of things that have been said so they can uh, 
Yes. And go to you. Now, what's, what's your contact number then? It's 3348 yep. 6098, and it's Lynn and Sanu who are on the phone today. Okay. Half shifts each. All right. Well, listen, we're going to have to leave you because Beautiful. we've got the latest news coming up and the weather and the sport, and Ted's waiting for us.